These people not only have grown spiritually, but they are loved towards one another in form of charity. Helping one another, loving one another has exceeded, has grown beyond leaps and bounds. And one of the one of the one of the marks of spiritual growth is by is by is by being in a position to see that you can be able to love somebody regardless of their background, regardless of uh, their failures, regardless of where they're coming from. You can be able to love someone just the way they are. Praise the name of Jesus. Is somebody getting me loud and clear? Are we, are we, are we good? Are we good? Please confirm. I'm seeing someone saying... Right, um, I'm, 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 I'm seeing someone saying that sounds not good. Uh, on, on, on my end, everything is okay. I think everything is okay. Right? Yeah. So if, if maybe you restart your, your gadget and uh, just flow with us as we continue in Jesus' name. So we begin to by understanding the discipline. Now, the true indicator of spiritual growth is in the ability to love God and people. Paul says to the Thessalonians church that he's glad that their faith has grown and then their love, their charity towards one another has increased beyond what he even expected. Now, you can always know that you're developing spiritually when you overcome petty offenses. Hallelujah. You can always know that you are growing spiritually when you begin to understand that you overcome Petty offenses. Hallelujah. Petty offenses. Then he goes ahead and tells us uh, uh, in verse number four. Uh, he goes ahead to tell us uh, in verse number four. Let me just uh, get there very quickly. Uh, in verse number four, he goes ahead to tell us something here. Mm. Second Thessalonians chapter one. At verse number four, he says, Therefore, among God's churches, we boast about your perseverance in faith and uh, in faith and uh, in faith in all the persecutions and trials you are enduring. All this is evident that God's judgment is right, and as a result, you will be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are suffering. Verse number six, God is just, He will pay back trouble for those who trouble you and give relief to you. Who are troubled. Praise the name of the Lord. Paul begins also by telling them here that all this is evidence that God's judgment is right. As a result, though you are persecuted, though you are going through difficult times, though it looks like it is crazy, but you have persevered. You know, when, when many people do not develop spiritually, they don't grow spiritually because when you have the, the call, you know, that evangelist who came to the village. And he preached his heart out, which is good. He did what God called him to do. And he said, Kwa Yesu kuna raha. You know, kam kwa Yesu le rent si italipua. Kam kwa Yesu uh, nja itaisha. Kam kwa Yesu kutakuwa na, na magudis. You know, come to Jesus, everything will be good. What they did not tell you, or rather, what your pastor now, after you received that first call, that first call, that first call from the evangelist, and you were sent to a church, to a pastor, what you are not told is that as you receive Christ, as you begin to develop spiritually, persecutions will come. Hard times will come. So now we, we, we realize now there are believers who are growing, but they are, they are not maturing. Is that the right word? They are growing up, but they are not maturing because they were, they were, they were, they were told that in Christ everything is just a smooth walk. But they were not told that as you receive Christ, persecution will be there. So Paul tells the church in, uh, uh, in Thessalonians, he tells them that uh, you have endured persecutions and trials among God's churches, among all other churches that Paul has planted. He is proud of the church in Thessalonica because they have not only grown in faith, but they have also endured persecutions and also they have loved one another. So you begin to understand part of spiritual development is having the discipline of loving one another, the discipline of, 
of enduring when persecutions come. You don't run away from your local assembly. You stay steadfast. You stay put in the place that you've been planted. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 95 that those who are planted in the courts of God, they will flourish. So you begin to understand as you are connected to a local assembly, where you are growing, even when persecutions come, even when times of distress come, you don't just run, you don't just be, like yesterday we said, you are not tossed away by every kind of doctrine, but you are planted in a place that you can be able to grow. Praise the name of Jesus. So you begin to love. Now, when we're talking about love, let us look at, um, let us look at how do we love. First Peter Chapter 1, verse 22. How do we love? You know, people think love is just about, uh, you know, emotions and sending those emojis. You know, those, those emojis that people just want to send around and people think that's just about love. That's just a part of it. What is love? God himself is love. Imagine how God is patient with us when we make mistakes. Yet he has never, people make mistakes, people enter into sin. Yet he has never, never, ever said we should not approach it. In fact, he says, approach his throne with confidence to obtain mercy in the times of need. That when you are in, in making those mistakes, he still calls you home. He still, wa he still wants you to be, you know, to be his child. That is love. Love endures. Love does not keep a record of wrong things. You are not developing spiritually because you are holding people in your heart. People that hurt you 10 years ago, 5 years ago, 3 years ago. You are holding people in your heart. It is not, the, it is not a character of God. And if you are developing, like we said yesterday, we are taking the nature of Christ. We are becoming Christ-like. That is why you are called a Christian. You are Christ-like. So one of the attributes is the discipline of love. First Peter chapter 1, verse number uh, 22. Go there with me very quickly. Uh, first Peter, first Peter chapter one. Uh, we put our finger at verse number uh, not twenty-two. Uh, this should be twelve. Sorry. First mm, uh, Peter chapter one, uh, verse twenty-two. Sorry. The Bible says, "Seeing ye have purified your souls." In obeying truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that you also love one another with a pure heart, fervently. Why? Because you are not born of corruptible seed, but of the incorruptible seed, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Praise the name of the Lord. See that you are purified. See you have purified you are souls in obeying the truth through the spirit. Remember yesterday we talked about man being a tripartite being, body, soul, and the spirit. Now he says here, seeing that you have been purified, you have purified your souls in obeying the truth, which is what? Through the spirit, unto unfeigned love for the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart. Is there someone who wronged you? Is there someone who messed you up? Is there someone who made your life miserable? God is telling you this evening, as you're watching this broadcast live, on whichever platform it is, as you're watching this broadcast live, God is telling you right now, forgive them. Forgive them and love them regardless. Love like Jesus. Forgive them and love them regardless. No matter what they did to you, love them. The greatest command is to love them. Somebody types and say, I will love everybody regardless of what they have done to me. I will love everybody. Somebody type, I will love everybody regardless. God is reminding each one of us, including myself, let us love brethren. It is one of the indicators of spiritual development. You cannot be anointed to hate people until profess that you are anointed to love. You see, you, people are praying, and there's something I want to, to address here. People are praying every day, God bless me, God do this for me, God do this for me. We bombard God with a lot of prayer requests. But our hearts are full of people. We are carrying people in our hearts. We don't want to release people. We don't want to, to forgive people. We don't want to let people just, you know. Listen, you cannot ask God for the grace to raise the dead when you can't forgive the living. 
And until you come and subject yourself to a place of loving people regardless, you are still not maturing spiritually. Hallelujah. Do you know when you love, you're demonstrating commitment to one another? When you love people, you are demonstrating commitment to God's people. And that's what Jesus said, how can you profess that you love? God said, how can you profess that you love your, your, me when you cannot love your brother whom you are seeing? And I'm telling you the truth. Until we come to a place of redefining what love is, we are not yet mature spiritually. Until we come to a place of redefining the love of God in our hearts to God's people, we have not yet come to a place of maturing spiritually. God is calling everybody to a place of loving one another, just as you love yourself. Hallelujah. You can't be committed to something you don't love. I said that on Sunday. People always create time for what they value, what they love. Do you create time for people, brethren? Do you create time for a brother who calls you? I just saw today and I shared that thing on, on my Facebook page. And uh, the, the, the tabloids are saying, the tabloids are saying that, uh, let me just pick it up here. The tabloids are saying that, um, uh, let me just read this here very quickly, that 483 people have committed suicide in just three months. Now, those are documented cases. We have not even touched on undocumented cases. And the World Health Organization has placed Kenya fourth in the highest number of depressed people in Africa and ninth globally. That means 1.9 million people in the country, as we speak right now, are depressed. Statistics say that five in every six Kenyans suffer from mental illness, do not receive treatment. Five out of, out of six. That, that means... That means in a family of in a family of five, in a family of five, four are suffering from mental illness, and nobody knows about it. The places of hope, churches have been closed down. Some pastors gave up, and I'm telling the truth, many pastors were hit by COVID, and instead of us helping pastors, some, sometimes we went ahead and did what castigated pastors. Oh, I'm a pastor of Ananga Kaz. I'm a pastor of Anakulanga Sadaka. But then, what I took on a normal, we were passing on Kimbia Kwaki Akuombe. Where is the love? Spiritual development calls us to a place of having the discipline of love. 1.9 million people in Kenya, as we speak right now, are depressed. Loans. And, and, and we were seeing how the news was showing the other day how people are taking loans how people have been put on CRB, and, and where is the love? The Bible says if there is love, people will even sell their stuff and lay them at the feet of the apostles, and the apostles, the pastors can be genuine and support the church. Where is the love? We are not growing spiritually. One of the ingredients is we must love one another. First John chapter 3 verse 14. First John chapter 3 verse 14. Let's write there very quickly. First John chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse number 14. What does the Bible say? If you're getting blessed, I'm getting blessed. If you're getting blessed, just say, I am getting blessed. Let me just see who is watching. Uh, let me just see who is watching here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let me just rush here very quickly. As you open, as you open your Bible to First John chapter 3 and verse number 14. Glory to God. The Bible says, we know that we have passed, we have passed from death unto life because, why do we pass from death to life? Because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Hallelujah. Eric Otieno is saying, I'm getting blessed. Maggie Eric is getting blessed. Vienda Pauline, Mary Trina, all the way from Egypt is getting blessed. Aha, uh Aleki -huh. Tush, God bless you. Amen, amen, amen. We are getting blessed together. Hallelujah. He says, uh, We know that we have passed from death unto life. Now, listen to this. What makes you know that you have passed from death to life? Remember, spiritual development, like we said uh, on Sunday, is dying to self. We also said yesterday, is dying to self. 
whereby is no longer us that live it, but Christ that liveth in us. Now he says, whereby we know that we have passed from death unto life. Why? Because we love the brethren. So when you love your brother, when you love your brother, you have passed from death unto life. What happens to those that don't love? But, but, uh, but uh, C of the same says, He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Verse 15 says very clearly, Whoever hates his brother is a murderer. You know, hate, <laughs> hate in itself is murder. So kama we ni mkristo mishu mbebe watu kwa roya hako, we ni madara. Babo di mesema, siyo mimi. So mbebe wako, 1 John 3 verse 15. Whosoever hated his brother is a madara. And you know that no madara has eternal life abiding in him. No madara has life in him. No madara has Christ in him. So when you hate your brother, when you hate ule msali kukosea, when you hate ule msali kuchukia, Ukichukia ule msali kupiga vita, inamanisha usha mada, usha, usha mkili uomse. So Christ ya yuko ndani yako. You know what nasema. So inamanisha, kama Christ ya yuko ndani yako, hawezi grow spiritually. Juni spirit ya God ndani yetu ni atafanya to grow. Buwana sifiwe. Praise the name of the Lord. So you have to be intentional about your growth. So we begin to understand in Ephesians 4.16 that we are joined together with Christ. And when you are joined together with Christ, the attributes of Christ, the discipline of loving, is still in us. Remember, the Bible says that when we were still seen as Christ died for us, meaning that even though he came on earth and the same people, the one became flesh and dwelt among men, and the, the people he came to die for rejected him, he still loved them. My goodness. He still loved us. Remember, Christ also is on earth. And people are saying, crucify him. Yet, there was no mistake. There was no error that he did. His only mistake, quote unquote, was to love us. Let me tell you, child of God. Love conquers. Love covers a multitude of sins. Love is not something that can be taken lightly. But if anybody desires to grow spiritually, they must love. Write that down. If anybody desires to grow spiritually, they must walk in love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can somebody go with me to John chapter 13 verse 17? John chapter 13 verse 17. Go there very quickly with me. John, John chapter 13 verse 17. Hallelujah, are we there? The Bible says something here. I want I want to show you something here. John 13, verse number 17. Jesus says something here. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. This is uh, an IV. Let me look at King James Version. King James Version. John. Uh-huh. John chapter 13, verse number 17. If ye know these things, happy are you if you do them. What are these things? Jesus, every time he, he finished talking to, his, to the disciples, he always told them, let he who has ears hear. Because there are people who have ears, but they don't hear. There are people who have eyes, but they don't see. I was sharing with my wife, I think, yesterday, the day before yesterday, and we were just discussing th something in, in our evening devotion, and she, she mentioned something that, you know, just tackled my spirit. And she said that uh, uh, a, a sight is a function of the spirit, not the eyes. Man, that thing will infect my brain. Sight is a function of the spirit, not eyes. And she said, and I was asking, why is it that you're saying sight is a function of the spirit? And she told me, you see, God has given us the ability to see things fast because we are triune. We are, we are, we are spiritual before we are natural. 
So we, we, have, we have the ability to see things beyond the natural and we have the ability to see things that the natural eyes cannot see. That's why Paul wrote in the book of Corinthians, like I said, but the things of the spirit are only perceived and received by them that are spiritual because to them that are in, in carnality, it is foolishness unto them. Praise the name of the Lord. So sight is a function of the spirit, pulling the end. It is. It is. So at that point, you begin to understand that the discipline of love is now what sets precedence after you have known you are committed to a given thing, after you have known the purpose, after you have known the, the, uh, the, 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 the reason why you are doing something, then now love carries the day. Jesus says, blessed shall you be if you know and do these things. That means you must know, you must be intentional about it, and you must be a doer of the word. Doing is what gives cuts the need for you. When you become a doer, that is the moment you begin to grow. So it's not about talking about love. Are you expressing love? Are you doing? Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. First Corinthians 13 verse number 7, love bears all. Love bears all. It covers a multitude of sins. Amen? Now, let us finish it up here. As you walk in the discipline, which is our, actually our last point. Today I was just giving one point and we close this uh, series. Salvation is not something we work for. It is a free gift of God's grace. Paul says in the book of Philippians chapter 2, verse number 12. Philippians chapter 2, verse number 12. That we should work out our salvation with fear and trembling. We should work out our salvation day and night with fear and trembling. Philippians chapter 2, verse number 12. Let us go there. He says, Therefore, my dear friends, therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, Continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Verse number 13. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Remember yesterday we talked about the good, the perfect, pur and the permissive purpose of God. Will of God. That when you begin to mature, you can be able to discern and distinguish the good, the perfect, and the permissive will of God. So Paul tells these people here that, dear friends, you have obeyed before. What is obedience? You can't obey someone don't love. You can't obey what don't love. So as you have walked in love before, not only in my presence, now let me speak as a pastor, not only in my presence as your pastor, you have obeyed even in my absence. Now that, or that connotation there talks about maturity. You know it's only toddlers who will miss church when pastor is not there. Ni wale watu bado ni watoto kwa wokovu. Ndiyo pastor yaki sema mitravel amenda mission awa kujangi church. But msa yako machua kwa mama ya God. Ata patikana kwa wepua mungu. Whether pastor yako ama yuko kwa sababu wamejua. I'm not coming to worship pastor. I'm coming to worship God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Is somebody learning something here? Is somebody learning something here? But now, much more in my absence. So in other words, when Paul has left, now these people are even loving him more. Lo I mean, obeying more. The obedience is now not out of, uh, out of uh, coercion, but it's now out of their spirit. It is out of understanding. It's out of love. Hallelujah. It is now out of what? The obedience is now out of love. So he's saying something here. Continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. He's not saying work for. He's saying work out your salvation. So salvation is not something we work for. It is something we work out because it is a free gift. Salvation is a free gift of grace. So when he's talking about working out our salvation, brethren, if salvation was just a walk in the park, we would not be working it out. 
We would not be here on Fast TV right now sharing this good news. If salvation was not working, then we wouldn't be on earth today. Probably God would have called us home. So it means when I wake up in the morning, I must work out my salvation. When I go to sleep, I must work out my salvation. How do I work it? We have talked about the discipline. We must be disciplined. We must be disciplined. Discipline is not a corporate affair. It is a personal affair. Spiritual development calls for discipline. And like I said before, you can't be committed to something you don't love. If you don't love your salvation, if you don't love your walk with God, you cannot be committed to it. Paul in Vienna is saying obedience is out of love, understanding, and spirit. Wow, that's, that's, that's powerful. Obedience is out of love, understanding, and spirit. Glory to God. Now, we're winding up on Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. Colossians chapter 3, verse number 17. Let's go there. Let me use the amplified version. You know, when I'm doing Bible study, you sometimes it's good to have different versions with you so that you can be able to compare. Uh, Colossians, let's go to Colossians, 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 uh, chapter 3, and we go to verse number 17. And whatever you do, no matter what it is, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus and in dependence upon his person or his spirit, giving praise to God the Father through him. Did you hear that? Whatever you do, part of spiritual development, it is a discipline. Remember, we have talked about the process the purpose, and we are finishing up on the discipline. Now, he says here, whatever you do, no matter what it is, if it is going to the, to the, to, 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 to the shop, if it is going to church, talking to your friend, um, going for those chamas that you go to, whatever you do, whatever you do, this is what he says. In words, kwa maneno, kwa maneno, in words, what is the content of your words? Whatever you do, does it glorify God? Somebody said that the, 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 I mean, the mouth is a very small organ, but it can cause a civil war. There are people who are in church, they are born again, but what they speak can bring everything crumbling down. So we are being told here, whatever you do, in word or deed, Kiswahili nasema kwamba, chochote ufanyacho kwa maneno ama kwa matendo. Do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. Do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. That signifies spiritual maturity. That signifies that you honor God with everything that you are doing. And he says, and in dependence upon his person. You know the Holy Ghost is not a dove. The Spirit of God is a person. The person of Christ is the Spirit of God. Because God is triune also. God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. So when you're talking about the Holy Spirit, it is God enabling you. It is God helping you. Hallelujah. And he's saying something here. In dependence upon his person, you are depending on him. Because if he doesn't help you, you are done. You are depending on him. You are depending on God. And he's saying something here. Giving praise to God the Father through Christ Jesus. In other words, life is a circle where God is at the center and everything else emanates from Him. For you to live 
is Christ. To die is gain. In him you, you move, in him you exist, in him you have eternal life. So as we come to a close, Romans chapter 12 verse 4. Romans chapter 12. We put our picket at verse number 4 and just down to 5 and we'll be closing this for today. We read this scripture yesterday about do not conform but I want us to go down to number 4. This is a I said begin from verse number 3. For by the grace given me I say to every one of you do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. We are closing on this scripture. Mary Trina, go to see you. Romans chapter 12, verse 4. Are we there? We begin from, from verse number 3. For by the grace given me, I say to everyone, as your pastor, as your pastor right now, and everybody that is watching, as the servant of God sent you in this hour, for by the grace of God given to me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. Kuna wase wanapenda kujigamba sana. Wanajisikia nga sana. Mini meokuka sana, mi, mi. Mi mase mi mungu wana nyangelishanga hivi face to face. Lakini kiangela life yake humse. Hata mungu wa yugo karibu na hivi. I mean, you've encountered these people. They talk la too much of themselves. They, they, wanajipuliza sana. Wanapenda kujipuliza sana. Paul is telling this Roman church, listen, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. In other words, humble yourself. God says he resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Humility has never failed to reward. It doesn't cost a thing to humble. Oh, me see that kwa chachi You know what I mean? When, I, when, I, when God called me to open up the church, I had those stories. And I can't go to a church that people are not, someone is not married. Oh, it's we, oh, it's we, oh, it's we. But you see, it's not in age. It is not in marriage. God does not use marriage as a, as a way, as a uh, stick, a, a yard to, to mesh anointing. God does not use age. If God used age, people like David could not be in the Bible. People like Jeremiah could not be called of God. God invests in his people, looks at the intent of your heart, and if God finds your heart is ready, then he can invest. Listen to me. God is an investor, and God is a serious investor. He never invests amiss. If God, if God wants to use you, he will use you. So let's continue as we wind it up. My time is up. Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought to, but rather... Think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. In accordance to the measure of faith that God has given you. Not everybody can speak mysteries. Not everybody can speak deeply. Not everybody can fast for 31 days. Not everybody can do a proper exodus of the Bible. But according to the measure God has given you, be at peace with it. You are developing. If he can trust you with little, he will trust you with more tomorrow. Today he might trust you with one verse, John 3, 16. Be comfortable with it, but strive. Strive to grow. Fika lapo 17. Inakuambia nini? God hao kamu kukondem, ali kamu kusev. Endelea fika lapo 18. Endelea fika lapo 19. Every day you grow step by step. And that's what we call development. You don't develop something overnight. It is a journey. Then he says something here. In accordance with the faith God has distributed to you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to belongs to all the other we have different gifts according to the grace given to each one of us if your gift is prophesying then prophesy in accordance with your faith if it is serving then serve if it is teaching then teach if it is to encourage then give encouragement 
If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, then do it cheerfully. Verse number 9 says, Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil and cling to what is good. My good Lord. Did you hear that? Spiritual development. See what the leo meskia una una feel. Hey, I saw first Prophet Steve prophesying. Man, I want to be like Prophet Steve. Then suddenly, boom, Prophet 001. Then the next time you go somewhere, you see another pastor uh, speaking word of knowledge. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to be forensic seer 001. No. Listen. Humility. You see these titles people are running after? You see these titles people are running after? And I'm not against anybody. It is good to have titles. It is good. For those who love titles, it's good. But you see these titles people are running after? It is a way of just trying to prove to people that I am higher than another person. I am not against titles. People work hard for them. Me, Miss Nashida. But let me tell you titles do not mean you have the mantle. Mantle is worked for. Titles can be bought. Mantles are worked for. Mantles are served. Paul tells us by as we finish, he tells, don't think of yourself highly than other people. Just humble yourself. In the set time, God will elevate you. God will lift you up. Praise the name of Jesus. So according to the gift that God has given you, walk in your gift. I want to finish and wind up by saying this. As God has given us the grace to grow in the things of the Spirit, one thing remains a surety. After all is said and done, as you mature from the place of a child, of taking milk to chewing bones and the meat, you will begin to find yourself operating in the gifts of the Spirit. You will begin to find yourself operating in the gifts of the Spirit. For those young people who are sensing a call of God in your life, don't run for the microphone. Don't run for the microphone. The faster you run for the microphone, the quicker you'll drop that microphone when it's now crazy. Seek a good mentor. Seek a good church. Seek a good pastor. Seek somebody who can be able to bring you in order and train you in the ways of the Lord. David says, train a child in the ways of the Lord. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. I want to close by saying, development is a process. And God desires that each one of us grow and be that which God wants us to be. I want us to pray. Before we pray, you want to give an offering. You want to be a partner. Uh, you want to join us. Tomorrow you will not be coming live. Uh, but we will be coming live again another time in which we will communicate. You want to give an offering, you want to be a blessing, uh, uh, just go ahead and uh, the, the, the numbers are on the screen, 0798053610, uh, the tier number is 5825381. Again, I will say, as you are led by the Spirit, we don't give out of coercion, we give out of, uh, out of uh, volution, you know, as the Lord leads you. So, um, you want to give... You want to give an offering? Our till number is right there on the screen. Uh, 5825381. Be a blessing. And uh, the Lord will bless you. Uh, it is there of the m -Pesa number. Please bring up the m -Pesa number as well. The m -Pesa number. Yeah. Yeah. 0798053610. Uh, be a blessing. Support the work of God. We are trusting God to continue to be on air. Uh, most of the time so that people can be able to learn uh, and I know we're going to be blessed so be a blessing also remember we are on YouTube uh, subscribe to Faf TV. Faf TV. the handles are there on the screen and the Lord will bless you let me just speak a blessing over you even as we close Father in the name of Jesus we thank you and I give you praise for everyone that is tuning in and watching right now I pray the Lord under the sound of my voice they will grow spiritually from level to level from glory to glory from grace to grace 
and above all things they will walk in love they will walk in purpose they will walk in your will not their will but your will and above all things we declare from today we will not remain the same again i bless them with their families and their children and their parents wherever they are father keep them safe those who are watching in diaspora whichever country they are i speak blessings over them lord be glorified and be magnified in our lives in jesus name we pray amen and amen amen mungu atubariki sana and i hope to see you days on wednesday uh tomorrow we won't be coming live uh on 8th of august we will be in Utawal. i'll be there with my brother david kasika to on um, friday we'll be in feather with uh, my brother Carl, we will be, we'll be ministering there uh, up to Sunday. On Saturday, we're in Thika. So, whoever wants to join us and support us, if you want to fuel our car, our vehicles, go ahead and uh, uh, go ahead and support the work of God. Mungu wa bariki sana. Shalom.